Hello, 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 Dr. Emily here, founder of the Joy of Cody Academy, and I am super, super excited today to talk to you about why universities and boot camps can't teach coding. Now, I know this might be a little bit of an unusual stance, and so I'm just super, super excited to dive into it today. I wanna make sure that everybody can get in and show me their comments. If you're here, let me know, pop in the chat, let me see it. I can't wait to talk to you guys about this, all right? So I really wanna make sure that you guys are here, that you're seeing what we're doing. Awesome sauce, super good. So welcome, if you're here, pop your, you know, just let me know in the chat that you're here. I'm happy, happy uh, to help support you and guide you in becoming a six-figure software developer in the next six months. And believe me when I say, I don't take that job lately, that it really is about helping you become as successful and as quickly as possible. So I wanna make sure that you guys can hear what I have to say today because it's a good one, it's a good one. So, you know, universities and boot camps, they were set up to help train coders, right? They were helped to set up train coders. And so what's, what's really going on there? What's going on that, you know, why wouldn't they be able to teach coding? Right? Like that's, that's the purpose of our lives today is, you know, why, why would university and boot camps, um, you know, not be able to train software developers? Like what gives, what's the deal here? So, you know, I've been in this field a really long time. And, you know, if you're here, please, you know, join me, pop it, your name in the chat so we can see it. But I'm just curious, you know, if you've ever had the situation where you tried to learn something and it was a struggle and you weren't able to, right? So for me, that was trying to learn how to code. It took me a really long time to learn how to code. And in fact, I spent, I don't know if I should reveal this, but I spent $244,000 and 10 years to learn how to code and 10 years all to learn how to code. And so that's a pretty big investment. I know a lot of people wouldn't necessarily invest that much time or energy in trying to learn how to code. And while doing it, I really lived in the university model. I got not one, not two, but three computer science degrees. And you know, at the end, who had to teach me how to code? I did. The university system was broken. It didn't work. So I was, I was, I would, to be honest, I was mad. <laughs> I was really frustrated. And I was like, everyone tells you that to learn something, you go to college, you get a degree. And I did that not once, but three times. And I still, I still didn't know how to code. I, didn't, I felt like I didn't know how to do anything. So, you know, I went on a mission after that, after I got my PhD in computer science, you know, I became Dr. Emily. And, you know, I really, I really wanted to make a difference. I wanted to find a way that we could systematically train anyone who wants to know how to become a software developer. Because I know that right now, most of the software that we see on our phones or on our computers is developed by people that typically look the same, right? And in fact, I looked very different from my peers. Sometimes I was the only woman in the room, right? Sometimes I was a student as the only woman and sometimes I was the professor, <laughs> right? So like, it's a very, uh, the field, is is not that diverse right and so i was really passionate about increasing diversity and hearing more voices in the space of software because at the end of the day software is a creative endeavor you're building something right uh and so allowing diverse viewpoints and, ex and life experiences to come into play and help create that software is only going to serve our society and humanity at a higher level so i went on a mission when i graduated my phd i wanted to figure out how do you teach anyone who wants to know how to become a software developer. And so I went into the university system and the, the way the university system works, just I'll tell you guys so, so you have this background, the university system is set up so an expert, right? You get a bunch of experts in a room, they're all sitting around tables and, uh, you know, and having these very, very weighty academic discussions. What should everyone know, right? It's all about what should everyone learn? What, what should it be? Okay, great. And then, and then they teach it, but, how does a group of experts in the room, like a room over here, understand what drives business hiring over there, right? So I think the biggest fallacy is when the university struck system got, put, got paired with and became synonymous with getting a job. Because technically, the university system was created 
to create intellectual thinkers, not necessarily to get jobs. But businesses decided they valued college degrees, and so then it became synonymous. But technically, that's not why the system was created originally. And so with a field like technology, software development, okay, this is the only field I know that changes while I'm teaching it. So I would be a professor, I'd come in, I wanna teach my students the latest and greatest technology, help them get those six figure jobs. I could walk into the classroom at the beginning of the semester and by the end of the semester, it might have changed. The best practices will have changed. The university structure is not set up to support that whatsoever. So the university model of get a bunch of experts in a room to decide what is important misses, it loses sight of the fact for fields like technology where innovation is driving it to evolve rapidly while students are learning, while people are teaching, it doesn't have a great setup for listening to what's happening out in industry, which is why historically people complain, right, about when they graduate from universities, just like I did, that they don't have skills that employers necessarily value right away. They have important skills and employers value them, but it's not the ones that they're gonna be to put to work in technology right away, which is why it can be so more, much more challenging for students trying to apply for their first jobs. Companies don't wanna take a risk. Oh, now I have to hire somebody and train them. They don't know, they don't, they don't know what we need them to know. Okay, so there's a there's a gap there, right? There's a gap there. So boot camps historically have risen up to meet that need and to and to serve that gap, right? To fill that role. And the, so, okay, great. So boot camps are responding to an industry need. Like, is is that not where where the solution lies? And the question is, is what are the boot camps teaching the graduates, right? So in a university setting, right, they can be the professors and the experts we really focused on like okay what is it they need to learn what is the student journey like we've got four years with them we're going to give them everything they need to be successful in life well yes and no right with a boot camp it's okay what is industry looking for let's teach it but what does that look like i don't know if you guys know this but i hear a lot of stories of students coming through boot camps because we see some of them inside the joy of coding academy Students will come through boot camps and, and they come to us and they're like, well, what about our, my second job? I hear a lot of students graduating from boot camps and not being able to keep their first job and needing a second. Wait a minute, what? Students are graduating with skills and getting a job, but then they can't keep it. Well, guess what? They didn't actually have the skills that they truly need, right? They had enough skills to get that first job, but if you're not set up for a successful 20 year career, I don't consider that done. I don't consider that graduated. Inside the Joy of Coding Academy, we are focused on, a, on helping nurture and guide each and every student to have those skills that they need for a thriving 20 year career. One job, that should be the easy thing. Of course, they should be successful at that first job and be able to keep it as long as they want. None of this getting kicked out. But with a boot camp, here's the risk, right? Boot camps typically don't, they're not as closely monitored as university structured systems. They're also much quicker, right? So depending on how they train their learners, they also may not be successful, right? Because if I just tell you how to do everything and you are the hands, that's great. That could get you your first dev job, but that's not gonna allow you to have a thriving 20 year career. You probably won't even get your next job. You probably won't even get promoted. If all you can do is be the hands, that's not enough, right? In technology, who are the people that are sought after to get all the big jobs? They can not only be the hands, but they can do the thinking too. They can do the critical analysis that's needed. They can communicate with stakeholders at many levels, right? The, the modern software developer and technologist actually has a whole bunch of tools in their toolbox besides just coding. They can't just be the hands. They have to be a problem solver. They have to have a little bit of architecture design. They have to be a communicator and so and a team player. So what I see happening, now this isn't necessarily true for all boot camps, what I see happening in the boot camp space is that they're really listening closely to industry and they're saying, okay, industry says learn JavaScript. Great, we'll teach JavaScript. But what if JavaScript is only the, the lower level of what needs to be taught? What if there is something more important that JavaScript supports? Like, would you just learn the alphabet one out one letter at a time or is the purpose of learning the alphabet so you can actually put words together and write a novel right like what is the purpose of what you're learning and so what i see missing out oftentimes on free online programs and many many boot camps that i've i you know uh, interviewed students from is i find 
that many of these boot camps are teaching the technologies, but they're not teaching the problem solving skills. This, this is the most challenging piece, right? Because technology changes all the time, right? How many times have we seen technology changing? But at the end of the day, right? What are the principles that underlie that technology? That, that doesn't change. The principles don't change, the technologies do. So it's not about JavaScript, right? It's about writing the front end web applications, for instance, right? It's about how do these components work together? It's about, you know, breaking a problem down into those seven basics, right? Which we talk about in this group all the time. And so it's really about learning how to solve problems, how to make decisions, right? It's the process of coding. It's the process of building a system. Yes, we also need to know some JavaScript. If, if your goal is to become a web or mobile developer, you will likely touch some JavaScript, some HTML and CSS, but it's not the focus, right? If you only teach that, right? It's like, it's like giving a painter a brush and teaching them the mechanics of how to you know, paint on the canvas, but not giving them any sense of color theory. Right, like, okay, there's just gonna be splotches on the page. It's not gonna be creating a masterpiece that we're looking for. And so that's what I see sometimes happening with some of with some of the boot camps that I've seen is that they're teaching the, you know, what exactly businesses are looking for on their resumes, but it may not be it may not come with that context of how do you actually use that in practice, right? How do you use that to problem solve? How do you actually meet client needs? How do you how do you create software in a live system with live users, right? Like, oh my goodness. And so this is where I think the joy of coding academy comes in and where universities and boot camps fail. Because what we are doing inside the joy of coding academy is we are training software developers with live practical experience on a guaranteed internship. So what we're doing is we're taking the best of both worlds and marrying them together. We're listening to industry. And not only are we listening to industry, because academia can do that too. Universities can have like an industry advisory board. We're not only listening to industry. We're getting commitment by having paying clients who are looking for technological solutions. They're looking for a software team to be built. They're looking for a software project. They're looking for an IT or some other kind of DevOps or security type of infrastructure, right? They're looking for technological solutions and they're compensating us for that, right? So we, we're not only listening to industry, but they're, they're voting with their dollars. Yes, we want this skill. We will pay for it, right? So now we know, okay, yes, this is an employable skill. Industry is willing to pay for it. But when we build out our trainings, we are leveraging the experience of experts right, expert educators, we're not just literally teaching the skills that industry is asking for, right? Like industry might ask for, okay, I want a React Native app, right, that does X, Y, and Z, right, that adds people, that allows them to log in, that adds items. Great. We're not just going to teach something like React Native, right? We're going to look at, okay, what are the underlying principles here that the students need to master so that they can not only create React Native apps, but any kind of app. That, that might come out there, right? That any kind of app that might be out there. And so it's really about, right, looking for both of these things together, right? That you leverage the experts where the experts are good. Experts are good at helping identify foundational knowledge, how best to teach things, right? If they're an expert educator and listening to industry for where the industry is going. Where are the jobs going? Where where are they hiring? What are the lucrative, the lucrative spaces where industry can't find solutions? Yes, we can provide those and we can train them quickly. And so the Joy of Coding Academy model is a little bit different because instead of, you know, experts on high saying this is what you need to know, we're listening. We're listening to industry to tell us what is worth hiring for. And then we're building the training pipeline to deliver that, to deliver that skill set. Because at the end of the day, technology is ever changing. So how do we create an educational system that adapts with the speed of the innovation that's happening out there right now. And so that's what we're doing inside the Joy of Coding Academy. And it's super exciting, super, super exciting. I'm so, so excited to bring this to you guys for anyone who's interested in it. So at the end of the day, right, there's, many, there's always many ways to learn. There's many ways to learn. But I think one of the challenges that we face in society right now is that, you know, people think, oh, the only solution is to go to college, but oh, it takes four years and it's like tens of thousands of dollars. Or I could go to a boot camp, potentially spending, you know, thousands of dollars to tens of thousands of dollars, depending on the boot camp. And, and there's still this risk of how do you get 
that first dev job? How do you how do you level up? How do you you know deepen your skills and get to that next level, right? And so, what we're trying to create is a solution to education for technical education for the twenty first century, where we're living in an environment that is evolving faster than our capacity to manage it, right? And so how do we create a system that allows us to deliver high tech quality education and train students to get jobs in as little time as possible? And so that is what we're creating inside the Joy of Coding Academy. I'm just super excited guys, so excited to share this with you. If you do have questions about this or if you have, this was a position, right? This is why colleges and boot camps typically fail at teaching coding skills. And I have an answer. And I think it's because colleges are, are listening to the experts only, and they're only giving lip service typically to industry. Boot camps may be over customizing to industry at the risk of not giving the theoretical fun fundamentals and foundations that will set people up for a successful long term career. So if you have any questions on that, please don't hesitate to put them in the chat. I do want to let you know for any I think mostly we have um, you know, we have a mix of students and non students in this group. We have some students, you know, listening live today that are in the Joy of Coding Academy, which I'm super thrilled about. Hey guys, how's it going? But if you do have questions, if you are thinking about this type of guaranteed internship model where you actually get to learn by doing on an actual paying client project, because I'll be honest, when I was an intern um, in college, I was an intern twice. I was an intern at NASA, NASA Goddard Space Flight Center when I was in college. And then in grad school, I was an intern at a, start, a small startup in Silicon Valley, literally in the shadow of Oracle. It was really cool. I drove by Oracle every day on my way to work. And the experience I had is that most interns get to have lunch with other interns, right? So typically an internship is not very hands-on, right? It, you get to network and meet people and kind of learn how to navigate but oh my goodness like i really it was really hard to do meaningful work in an internship and if you think about it i mean just think about it for a second from the perspective of the company okay i'm gonna hire this person normally i pay software developers 165k and up right or 100k and up right i'm gonna hire this person for the summer for like 10k am i gonna give them anything mission critical no it's basically an investment to see if they're worth hiring basically, or really low cost labor, right? And so a lot of times interns aren't given real business meaningful tasks, not so inside of Joy of Coding Academy, because we have built out our own small software company to give students that quality education and internship experience, right? It allows us the space to build a process that can help students and guide them to becoming six figure software developers, which is why, you know, this isn't the same setup you might see in a typical traditional internship program and so it's very very hands-on it's very education driven and focused and we have you know pathways and pipelines to help move every student forward which is awesome oh i see i see a, i see a comment awesome guys so unfortunately i can't see your names today unless you gave Streamyard permission so fyi but uh somebody's asking are these projects that can be done along with a full-time job that is an awesome question i get that all the time so some there are some programs out there that require you to drop everything and only learn to code like 60 or 80 hours a week right that's not the joy of coding academy we have created a virtual part-time program that allows you to be effective in as little as two hours a day right so if you think you can carve out consistently two hours a day five to you know five to six days a week for the next six months you're golden Right, we look for interns on our projects to commit between 10 and 15 hours a week, and we design the activities for the interns along those lines as well. Great questions, guys. Great questions. I love it. Super great. So, and I think I think that the Joy of Coding Academy is really hitting the best of both worlds. Right, we are, you know, we're listening to industry, but we're not only listening. Right, we're your vote. Do, do you notice when you vote with your dollars, <laughs> right? Like you're listening a lot harder when someone votes with their dollars, right? So like we're listening to industry and we're actually inviting industry opportunities inside the Joy of Coding Academy so that we can give students that realistic six-figure software developer experience. Because think about it. If you've already delivered working software to a paying client, right? That's live on the internet. How confident would you be when you go into an interview, right? Like, oh, yeah. I updated 
you know, this form and this validation page to use this different library. And we use continuous integration. We used, you know, the Cypress test framework. Like when you can just rattle off all the pieces of your pipeline and the frameworks that you've used in a sentence, you have revealed just how much you know about the software process, right? And so it's, it's gonna be easy to hire you because you've already been doing the work. You already know what to do, you're low risk, right? Pair that with some connections as well. So you have the skills plus the connections, right? Imagine being on the short list for a job or the only applicant. It's happened, it's happened, right? How do you think your chances of success would be then, right? If you're a trusted person, if someone on the inside of the company is pulling your resume across the hiring manager's desk, yeah, you're gonna have an advantage. You're gonna have an advantage. So, so good. So, so good, guys. I love it, super great. Oh my goodness, such amazing comments, excellent. And so that's really the focus inside the Joy of Coding Academy is getting you to the place where you are actually on the job, right? Like you are shouldering the work that a six-figure software developer shoulders. So it's the ultimate confidence boost because now you know you can do it because you've done it, right? We literally put you into that position. But the key thing is because it's training focused, you have this huge support network at your disposal so that you can move forward faster, right? Whereas when you get into a job the first time, who do you ask? Where do you reach out for help? No, inside the Joy of Coding Academy, we have live peer mentors available seven days a week, multiple times a day, in addition to senior software engineering mentors like myself and our other senior support staff. So there's so much support all over the place. Yeah, it, we give you everything you need to be successful as a six-figure software developer. So good, guys. Oh my goodness. Any, any other questions? from you guys. I just wanna make sure I'm not missing anything. These are great questions. And oh, I did wanna mention, for anyone that's thinking about it, right? If you're thinking about the Joy Coding Academy, if you're thinking about becoming a six-figure software developer in 2024, you just wanna you know, advance your technical skills, come visit us at the masterclass. I host it live you know, this Thursday. It's gonna be at nine o'clock Eastern. If you want reminders, just make sure that you sign up. It's sixfiguresoftwaredeveloper.com. Um, I'm, sure I'm sure we can post a link there. But come live, like I'll be there live to answer your questions. And we, I don't really have time, you know, right now to, to do it justice of what this can look like, what this pathway can look like. like what do you need to focus on? What are, what are the principles, right, that we want to follow as we learn together? What are the seven basics, right? Or what's the role of the seven basics in, you know, in learning how to become a six-figure software developer? So this Thursday night at nine o'clock, I'll be going live. Uh, in a master class where we'll talk exactly about that. And if you're interested in the seven basics, you should have received a link to our seven basics mini course, which is totally free. It's a five hour portfolio building mini course. And it will just, I all the comments I've heard is that students will take that five hour mini course. The average I hear is usually about two hours and they can replace years of learning, right? It just springboards them forward so much faster. Awesome, thank you, someone put in the chat. Thanks guys, love it. So thank you guys for tuning in and committing to becoming a six-figure software developer in 2024 and up-leveling your career. And if you have any other questions after, after this live is over, if you're watching a replay, please don't hesitate to reach out and and ask your questions here. We'll definitely get back to it, back to you as soon as we can. All right, guys, have an awesome rest of your day. Happy coding. Take care.